Um, let's let's read this. It says, do you know there is a- additional historical evidence for a Wednesday crucifixion? Although it was a minority position in the early centuries of Christianity and ran against the prevailing teaching of the church in Rome, some early historical documents nonetheless acknowledge a Tuesday night Passover, a Wednesday afternoon cru- crucifixion, and a Saturday sunset resurrection. Around the year 200, a document purporting to pass on apostolic instruction called the Didascalia Apostolorum mentions that the last Passover of Jesus Christ and his disciples was on a Tuesday night. It should be noted that the timing mentioned in the document corresponds to the biblical method of counting time. That is, the week started with Sunday as the first day and the days began at sunset. This document states, For when we had eaten the Passover on the third day of the week at evening, that's Tuesday evening, we went forth to the Mount of Olives, and in the night they seized our Lord Jesus. And the next day, which was the fourth of the week, Wednesday, he remained in ward in the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. Okay. Well, I want to read one more, one more little thing here. Paradoxically, the text goes on to mention that Jesus was crucified on Friday, showing great confusion about the dates for the biblical account clearly states that Christ was crucified on the day following that Passover meal. This is true. He's right about that. In other words, the biblical accounts, and this I put uh, 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 biblical passages uh, referenced in your show notes, you can look those up yourself. <laughs> but there's no break within the within the narrative. He says, nonetheless, the document demonstrates that Passover was then understood by some to have been on Tuesday evening, which would place the crucifixion on the next day, Wednesday. Um, the biggest problem with this, uh, w- with what this person has said, is that they did not keep reading in the Didascalia Apostolorum. Let's go to it. And this also, I put, (laughs) uh, for those who receive our show notes, this is a plug for our show notes. I put a link to the entire Didascalia Apostolorum in your show notes. So if you want to go check it out, you can. Um, Let me find my show notes here. Let's let's read real quick uh, the the whole passage of what this person is saying. Um, This person is in uh, chapter 20. I'll start in verse 13. And uh, it says, And Judas came with the scribes and with the priests of the people, and betrayed our Lord Jesus. Now, this was done on the fourth day of the week. For when we had eaten the Passover on the third day of the week, at even, at, at, at even we uh, at evening, I think it should be, we went forth to the Mount of Olives, and in the night they seized our Lord Jesus. And the next day, which was the fourth of the week, he remained in ward in the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. And on the same day, the chiefs of the people were assembled and took counsel against him. And on the next day again, which was the fifth of the week, they brought him to Pilate the governor, and he remained again in ward with Pilate the night after the fifth day of the week. But when it drew on towards day on Friday, they accused him uh, much before Pilate, and they could show nothing that was true, but gave false witness against him. And they asked him of Pilate to be put to death, and they crucified him on the same Friday. So basically what this document seems to be saying is that the Passover Seder was was on Tuesday and that he was arrested on Tuesday night in Tuesday night during the night Wednesday Thursday he was being tried Pilate Caiaphas all these things and then finally on Friday Pilate puts him to death this is what uh, the didascalia apostolorum is uh, putting forth here however the person who wrote this this article forgot to keep reading and this is a very important thing to do when you are um, when you're reading these kind of historical documents, because this uh, document says specifically, if we go down to verse 17, we find this. But by reason of the multitudes of all all the people from very from every city and from all the villages who were coming up to the temple to keep Passover in Jerusalem, the priests and the elders took counsel and commanded and appointed that they should keep the festival straight away that they might seize him without disturbance. For the inhabitants of Jerusalem were engaged with the sacrifice and the eating of the Passover, and moreover, all the people that were without uh, that were without were not yet come, for they had deceived them as to the days, that they might be convinc- convicted before God of erring utterly in all things. Therefore, they anticipated the Passover by three days and kept it on the eleventh of the moon, on the third day of the week. 
For they said, because the whole people is gone astray after him, now that we have an occasion, let us seize him. And then when all the people are come, let us put him to death before all, that this may be known openly and all the people may turn back from after him. So the same document that this person is using as historical fact that, that Yeshua's Last Supper was on a Tuesday says that they moved it by three days, which, by the way, would never happen. The Pharisees couldn't do that. The Sadducees couldn't do it either. There would have been riots by the people. Don't miss any clips from Messiah Matters by clicking the subscribe button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and share it so other people can see it too.